Okay, so this is the introductory video to using WooCommerce WordPress. Now, do you understand that this is probably not a comprehensive video? This is not going to be the uh, one video that you are going to watch. This is going to be it. This is going to be everything. This is the uh, dirty, quick breakdown of WordPress and mixed with WooCommerce. Um, WooCommerce is a big company. They have their own uh, tutorials. Um, that are really, really in-depth. They're really, really good. Um, as well as there are a bunch of other people out on YouTube who have their own videos as well that will explain the more intricate parts or the more um, uh, specific parts of WordPress probably in more in-depth than this video can go into. This just gives you a quick, dirty overview of WordPress and you're hearing my voice as opposed to somebody who's probably a bit more well-trained in this and uh, <laughs> or works for WooCommerce. So um, here's the quick and dirty. So once you install WooCommerce, after you've, of course, installed WordPress, because WooCommerce is an add-on to it, um, you're going to end up seeing these two extra pieces right here. Really cool. WooCommerce and has its own set of uh, submenus in here, as well as products, but we haven't added any products or any uh, tags or anything, categories, so we're going to mess with this first. So when you click on WooCommerce, you're going to be taken to your order section. And the long story sh made short is anytime you get an invoice, it's going to end up in here. Somebody pays and sends you money. They buy your product. They buy your service. Your money goes into your bank. Their money, rather, goes into your bank account or whatever the case may be. Um, an invoice is created. Boom, it goes right into here. So essentially, you're going to get a breakdown of what each order is. Um, so in here, it's going to be the status, the order purchased, uh, what the product was purchased, who you shipped it to. Now, these are some of the more important parts. This is going to be the custom um, message that the um, customer would have sent to you if you added that in, as an option to your checkout page. And this right here is the order notes. So um, essentially, if somebody was, uh, let's say you're selling flowers and they wanted to say, tell my, my honey, bae, boo, darling, sweetie pie, um, that I love them, that I miss them, but next time you cook that meatloaf, it's probably going to need to be not dry and try and kill me. Um, if they put that as a message, it would show up in here as each invoice. If it's that long, it'll probably say more, and then you click onto it, and of course you get your details for that. Um, order notes. So if, let's say, a customer has ordered 15 times, and each time we've got it wrong, um, let's get it right this time. You could put an order note here that, um, yeah, for this particular order, we need to make sure that the roses are dyed purple instead of white. So um, you put that in here, and of course you get your date and your total for the order, and each one of them here, and you get a bit more detail. But what is this button here? Quick and dirty of it is, add to order is, let's say you are a vendor, uh, you have a vendor shop where you do some kind of like lemonade stand or you go to some kind of flea market or something where you have a standing shop or booth um, or even if you have a brick and mortar and you wanted to add a um, manual order in here you could do so so if let's say you're using Square you took somebody's order through Square on your mobile phone um, processed it you want to have an invoice sent to them as well as you want to um, integrate this system into one of your taxation systems or anything where you use this as a way to at the end of the year um, do your taxes and you want to make sure all of your orders in here keep all your numbers and your P&L reports set you could do it in here it's really really cool really really simple everything's pretty spelled out here general information right here um, billing details um, there's something that you need to know every time an order is made you can set it to where um, either customers when they purchase something they purchase it they go, and that's it. You only get a record of the order and, of course, the details in it. Or you could set this up to be more of a kind of a boutique or shop like uh, some of the bigger companies out there um, where you go to purchase something and it asks you to make an account. Um, I would recommend if you plan on staying around for a while and you plan on having repeat customers um, that you would go ahead and go that route because that would allow you to do CRM. You would want to do some kind of customer resource management in which you can not only tell your products to your target audience, um, you may find out some products are just wasteful and some people don't even want them. So that would help you cut back on producing any more of those products and waste your money on that. And once again, that's Business 101. I'm not going to get into that. But as well as um, you could tailor your coupons to uh, your customers. So let's say... And I created this one already. I didn't mean to leave this one here. But essentially, um, you would be able to create your coupons for them based upon, let's say, you have a particular customer who orders a whole bunch of stuff. But in particular, they have a, a order or a bunch of orders for a particular product. 
you know that one of your products, new products coming out, you know that one's going to be discontinued, you can give them some kind of a discount or something for moving over to a new coupon. So, of course, this is what you put the name at. So, if I get rid of this, move here, you see it says coupon code. This is the actual coupon code that the person would type in. So, if, let's see you say, um, you can name it that, and that's what the person would type in when they're at the checkout. So make sure whatever you're gonna put in here is gonna be what the name is. And this information is for you to know. So if let's say you knew that this was only, only a test, <laughs> you would put that there. Um, and that would be for you to see so you know exactly which one's which because it, you may have a bunch of coupons and some of them may not even end up knowing that you may need to get rid of. So um, it's good to label that in there. Um, then there's only really three sets of information that you need to fill out here under coupon data. Um, there's general, ma minimum spend, maximum spend, individual use only. You can also set it for spe uh, specific products. You can exclude products. So let's say you have 100 products and you're like, oh my God, I don't want to add 900 and, you know, or um, 95 of them into here. I just want to exclude five that I know I'm not going to need to have the coupon work for. You put it in here. Very, very simple. Very easy. And let's say you have a particular set of customers with you. Really, really don't like them. Or let's just say that um there you want to make sure that there are uh, a set of customers who may end up seeing those coupons but they're wholesalers and you don't want the wholesaler to accidentally use that coupon and kind of mess up the invoicing for them um you would want to add their email in here so disregard them um the uses limits pretty pretty self-explanatory usage limits per usage limit per coupon essentially is let's say if um let's say myself i bought um particular set of products and I use a coupon I can use it 10 times you put the limits on there to be 10 but let's say that same coupon name was given to my sister and she used it only three times it would not be a total of 13 it would be a total of just 10 for me and three for her so she would still have seven to use um, whereas in here usage limit per user um, essentially so once again if I purchase something and I have the count in here um, let's say the same particular coupon I could only use it twice and that would be it so you'd be able to give this out to more than just me or whatever the case may be you could limit it to how many times that is used um, per user so you could make that more um, distributable or not so um, that's pretty pretty simplistic right there inside of here you would want to make sure that you um, double check this you want to make sure that you have it set properly because that may mess up um, how the total funds gets to you. You want to be very, very careful with that because you want to take in mind, of course, your taxes and your shipping amount. And, uh, of course, at the end of the day, it's all about profit and making sure that your um, product is getting paid for, your service is getting paid for. So this type of coupon would be a whole uh, cart discount, a cart discount, but a percentage. So and you may take $10 off or you can take 10% off. So the difference, of course, is... Um, let's say it's a hundred dollars in the cart and you take five dollars off that'd be ninety five dollars but if you put ten percent here then of course that would be ten dollars from the hundred so ninety dollars so uh, product discount that would be per product and let's say if there were two products but they have both products within the cart and one of those products is the only one that you want to designate as being part of um, what would get uh, the discount added to it, it would only be, of course, added to that particular product. So 10% off product A would be 10% off product A, but B remain the same. So then you would get a total amount minus the uh, percentage for product A. Um, so that makes it pretty simple, pretty easy to understand. Reports. Reports is, and you'll get this if you don't publish, so don't worry about that part. Leave the page. This is probably the thing that you'll be looking at as you... Um, start to grow your business after you've settled all your products, after you settled your coupon, you got everything straight. This is what you're going to be checking in like a maniac uh, day in and day out or um, week to week, month to month. You'll be looking at uh, how many sales you made for the day, the month, uh, year, things like that. Um, customers per customer, you'll see you know how many orders they made down here. I'll give you the dates. It's quite a long chart here. You want to definitely look that over. And of course, there are your sub information here, so um, that'll give you information on that.
Uh, of course, same thing with the dates down here. It'll vary it based upon what you hovered over. And then, of course, there's stock. It tells you how many were purchased, units and left in stock, so it gives you your stock amount. So if um, you did want to use the system to help manage stock, let's say you um, have a brick and mortar or you have physical inventory, this is a great way to be reminded of how many you have in stock, how many you have sent out, um, as well as how many you probably need to order. Settings. Settings are the biggest thing that you're going to be setting up when you first get started out, and you're going to want to pay attention to the submenu. And I'll show you, this, show you the submenu in a moment. But base location, all of these are kind of important because you want to make sure that if purchases are, met, let's say, made outside of the U.S., um, that would be set here. But if you didn't want it to because of either um, just restrictions with your shipping or you don't intend for that product to go out, outside of the U.S., or uh, you just know it's a pain in the butt to ship outside the U.S., um, then make sure you want to set it here your base location that is important for not only shipping purposes for tax purposes once again i am not a tax lawyer you may want to go and see a cpa or something to that effect but um essentially if something is purchased in your state then yes you um the taxes will be applied however if let's say you're in arizona and someone purchased something from new york from you then the taxes won't be applied but once again see a tax lawyer about that um all this is really self-explanatory sell specific countries you can put them in there default customer address um, so basically based upon the information that they put in when they go to check out will tell the system hey listen yes go ahead and apply tax or don't go and apply tax or this is the correct shipping information um, let's go ahead and make sure that we get this sent out and um, put this in pending which is part of the um, reports the order reports um, if you're first setting up what this is for is for first setting up or you can use this for any other type of information but generally I use it for um, when I'm in test mode like this, and essentially what it would look like is right here. This is a demo store for testing purposes. No order shall be fulfilled, so if you buy something, you are SOL. Deal with it. Um, you can put whatever you want it to be. Um, if you want to buy something, look else. The changes to the site. Boom, see. So you could use this for anything to kind of notify customers that either something is out of stock or um, big coupon sale today or something like that. You can use that for that if you want. But um, you could just make it um, site wide. You can turn it off if you want. You definitely want to set this up. Make sure you have this set up properly because there are a load of options. You want to make sure that you get paid and get paid correctly. So. We would want to set up as per normal. You probably don't want to do anything too out of the way because um, if you do it out of the way, you'll notice that it looks kind of weird and you don't want to throw your customers off unless you're trying to be uh, fancy and funny and uh, hope that your customers are completely okay with that. Otherwise, other than that, if they get really confused, more than likely, they won't buy from you. Leave this page. Products. Um, of course, you want to change it based upon whatever you're used to use ounce pounds kilograms um, whether you use uh, metric or, metric or um, imperial completely totally up to you uh, product ratings you could do that here um, as well I would once again you would want to be uh, careful about that because that's the same thing as a blog or commenting system um, if someone has purchased from you um, or not purchased from you maybe maybe, maybe you have uh, someone who isn't too much of a fan of yours or they may even be a competitor of yours they can try and leave something on your site that may be inflammatory and you may not be happy with that so um, you would want to select that I'll only, uh, only allow reviews from verified owners you can put that in there and these are the sub menus that I'm talking about for each one of these you'd want to be careful make sure you go through every one of these and of course we make a change you have to click save changes as per page as you saw I just added it but I didn't save changes I went to the next page and it went away so you have to do that um, in here, you can select the shop page. You don't have to make it that page. If, let's say um, you didn't want to be labeled a shop page or you have multiple pages you want to change. But so what if, for whatever reason, you can change it to be whatever page you want. And what that means is that um, the products will be shown on that page and will display that way. So if we go to visit the store, it would be the sample page. We don't want it to be up, so. All of these are really self-explanatory. Um, shop display page. 
right there. This is an area that you, of course, you would want to make sure that you take a good look at. How you display your images to your customers is very, very important, especially with items that um, are physical. So if it's like a downloadable whatever, then probably not because it's intangible. When I say downloadable, like you don't need to make sure that you have a really, really huge high res image for an ebook, unless you have a really intense cover. If you have one of those like uh, early late nineties, two thousands, Fabio cover romance novels, things then you may want to display that on there. But this is used for, um, especially if you want to display things like light bulbs or shoes, even, especially with items that have a great amount of detail in it. Um, pictures that you're selling, you may sell art artwork or something, you'd want to adjust this so that the items would uh, display how you want them to display and you want them to display very well. We'll get into that in a moment. Inventory. Once again, self-explanatory. Manage stock, you can turn it off if you don't want it to. So if like you're selling just a bunch of uh, non-tangible items, such as... Uh, Songs or uh, you know, MP3s, videos, ebooks, stuff like that. You would want to turn that off because it really isn't a reason to be uh, notified of how many you have or don't have. And of course, your downloadable products would be in here. So if you did have um, in non tangible products, downloads require plugin, um, login. You can force the download immediately upon checkout. You can have it go to redirect as well as uh, grant access to downloadable products after payment. So basically, um, basically what it says here, enable this option to grant access to downloads when orders are processing rather than completed. You would probably want to leave it like this because if, let's say, um, somehow the transaction didn't go all the way through, and I'm not going to go through necessarily how you would uh, work the system to where that you could make that not work, but basically, if something were to halt the transaction 90% of the way through, the person that was going to pay for this would have access to downloading if you have this unchecked. So we want to leave it checked. Go to save changes. Taxes, once again, go and talk to a tax preparer. Go and talk to someone who's knowledgeable. You could probably do it online for free, but I definitely um, advise talking to someone about it. You definitely want to enable taxes if you have physical products um, you want to make sure that happens because if somebody purchases within your state um, I, I don't even want to get into the ramifications but essentially you you do want to do this unless you want to end up paying the taxes at the end of the year and having a talk with the IRS have fun with that conversation I won't want to be there mm -hmm. um, <laughs> calculate tax based upon customer shipping address once again talk to a CPA all this information is not necessarily something I can go over I can just give you um, the admonishment, please, please, if you're selling physical products, enable it, get it figured out. There's different rates in here. Figure it out. Use it. Check out. Stay on this page. Click save changes. All right. Check out is a funny, funny thing. And the reason for that is because there are multiple ways of processing. And the, the long, short, the quick and dirty of it is... Um, you are not a processor. The website is not a processor. A processor is the company that is the th middleman, the third man, uh, the third wheel, the person in the middle that you know reaches their hand into someone's bank account, the, your customer's bank account at midnight, and snatches their funds out of their bank account and puts it into your bank account. Um, they're not thieves or anything. They are the equivalent of the folks that put the machines in a grocery store that you swipe your card in. The grocery store does not, is not a processor. The grocery store is a grocery store. They give you your, your milk and your bread and all your uh, delicious treats. And if you're an adult, they give you your liquor. <laughs> but um, the processor is the folks who talk to the grocery and says, hey, how are you going to get the money out of the person's pocket? I mean, we don't live in the early you know, 1900s. I mean, not everybody's using cash anymore. Um, we have a quicker way of doing that. Here's a little swipe pad and has your typical signing and uh, digits on there that you can, somebody can put in their pin. They're the company that does that. And typically it's done at midnight, but basically dependent on the processor, there are different um, transaction fees. Some of them are done monthly, annually. 
um, depends on who the company is. Some of them are based upon the transaction will take out a certain percentage per transaction. So if uh, some of them do like uh, 2%, some of them do almost 3%, some of them do even 5% or 8% on top of, let's say, 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents uh, on top of that. So it really depends on the processor. Um, you would want to keep in mind who you want to deal with. Personally, I would advise checking out all of them. Um, some of the most popular ones, uh, most popular one right now is PayPal. The most used, the biggest dog of them all is Authorize.net. So, of course, if you have never been to PayPal, you would want to go to PayPal. You go and see those folks. Um, they do have uh, your standard account, and they have PayPal business accounts, and they give you a nice little business card um, that treats your business just like a regular business, and you can treat this like a regular credit or debit card. Um, and then there are the lovely folks at authorized.net and there is Stripe and Squares uh, of course I'm just going to pull up authorized.net for you and the difference essentially between them uh, long story short is how much you're charged when they put the funds into your account as well as what they will allow you to sell or what they will help you process um, PayPal is one of the most well-known ones. Yes, they do take credit cards. You do not, your customers do not need to have a PayPal account, even though, I mean, once again, that's upon them. If they do change their methods, then that's on them. Um, but they do process credit cards as well. They have a typical turnaround of time of two to five business days before um, funds are put in your account, sometimes shorter than that. Sometimes it could be 24 hours. It really depends on whatever you have set up with them. I would definitely suggest giving them a call. And actually, funny thing, they're based in our, um, one of their, their, um, Buildings are here in Arizona. Um, Authorized.net, however, their transaction fees vary, but they're a little bit less stringent than PayPal or the rest of them. Um, so if you're selling tobacco, firearms, anything of that expense, vapes, um, you know, e-cigs, you know, the liquid uh, for e-cigs, or vaping rather, um, they're okay with that, but there are some hoops you need to jump to uh, sign up with them. So it's not too difficult, just some things you got to do. Um, but do look into, look into all of them. Um, I would even suggest uh, Google Play. They did something recently, and they're um, trying to compete with PayPal as well as Amazon. Uh, I personally have all of them. I have Square, uh, PayPal, Amazon, uh, Authorize.net, Stripe. Um, yeah, I, I've tried a lot of them. So in here is where you could set the processor that you want to use or processors you can have multiple and if you are familiar with it basically when you go through like one of the big dogs and you're purchasing something it gives you the option of which payment you want to use whether you want to use paypal or credit card so you have to add that on typically as a gateway it would, that would be a plugin you can use the ones that come with this um uh, so, like, for example, if you want to set up PayPal, you would enter your information into here. So, there's a bunch of information, and they're all going to vary on the type of information that um, you need to put in. But essentially, one of the big things that you're going to want to do is make sure you enter your correct information. You're also going to be asked for... Um, various information such as an identity token or API credentials, whether it's a signature or key or something to that effect. So essentially what those are are um, the lock and key, the security that's in place that allows your system to talk to them so that they can take funds once, this, um, once a transaction has been done and authorize it for uh, removing money from the person's bank account and putting it into yours. As well as another big thing, thing to remember in here is that as you're setting it up, you can put it in a sandbox mode. And typically that's all of them. You can put in some sort of sandbox or test mode, which allows you to um, test out payments to make sure everything works correctly. So um, if you want to use, let's say, Authorize.net or Stripe, you would have to get a separate plugin to do that. And in most cases, those plugins do cost a particular fee and more than likely it's a one-time fee, but you do need to do that. Um, another thing that you need to do is your shipping, if you have, especially if you have physical products. Enable shipping. Shipping can be a uh, very sorted, tiring process, but long, quick, long short of it, quick and dirty, is you need a processor. Once again, you need that third party, that, that guy who comes and picks up your, your product and takes that to the, the shady, shady person in the next state that ordered it from you. Um, 
but you need that to happen. Of course, there's going to be some sort of fee associated with that. So um, a couple of our customers that I know, a couple of folks that I set up, they use USPS or even um, UPS. Um, so you can use FedEx, whoever you want to use. It's totally up to you. I would suggest giving them a call, finding out um, their rates. And then when eventually you get down to who you want to use, you will want to find a plug-in um, for them as a shipment processor and add it into here unless you want to add it in manually. If you add it in manually, you would enable the method and give it a title and the shipping status would be under your shipping classes. And essentially that once again can keep become a little bit complex or sophisticated because you will either ship by um, your calculations for it. So let's say somebody buys a $100 product, that $100 shipping rate may be $5 compared to a $1,000 product um, due to the pricing or maybe the weight of the product, however you dictate it, instead of being $5 in shipping, it will be $50 in shipping. You have to figure out according to the company that you're with or according to the products that you're selling, which method you want to use. And like I said, there are plugins that would allow you to connect to these shipment processors. So there are plugins for um, USPS, UPS, FedEx that allows you to connect to their system. You would connect your account and from there, you would be basically all their info, all of their rates according to your account would get plugged right into your system. That would save you a little bit of time and effort. Um, there's accounts in here. So registration options. Once again, if you wanted someone when they purchase something from you to it creates an account for them, you could turn that off if you want. Uh, but once again, you probably want to manage your customers emails. Pretty simple um, from email. Pretty, pretty, pretty simple, all really uh, self-explanatory. Of course, you need to go through each one of these. So if you wanted to customize, um, let's say, a completed order, how it looks and what email gets sent out, your order is complete. You can put that in email. You can send out the emails. Of course, that is if you want to customize it. And once again, that's something I recommend doing, especially if you are going to manage your customers. It gives that personal touch as well as it... Uh, it puts things in order for you. An API, we can get into that later. If you have any questions, you can most certainly comment down below or you can send me an email to my email address. If you haven't seen the email address, um, then more than likely you're not paying attention to this video or you don't know who I am. So um, yeah, that'll be down below. System status. This as a techie, techie nerd or if you're a developer or somebody new getting used to this, this is all the stuff that you'd want to look over because if you're having any errors when you are building the site, processing anything, um, you, you'll, you'll run into something, some kind of sort of error, you're going to want to check here because more than likely if something is red, there's a problem. So like for example, WordPress memory limit set to 40 megs, they recommend 64. Click on the link, it'll tell you how to do that if you don't know how to do that. Um, but I would imagine that if you've installed WordPress before and you've messed around with it, you have an idea of how to do that. At least you should. And if you don't, if you don't have a developer, you don't have an admin, I definitely recommend doing it. It's not worth, um, you know, downing some shots of rum and taking some aspirin, banging your head against the wall trying to do it. Just hire an admin, call it a day. You need to focus on your business. And if you are an admin, if you're a developer, and you don't know how to do this, Code Academy, get on your game and uh, figure it out. You'll get it. It's pretty easy. Um, Add-ons. You once again, we talked about add-ons earlier. Um, for gateways, boom, see, Stripe, USPS, authorized Senate, see, it's all right here. They tell you that you're probably going to need these. So if you want to know, payment gateways, ta-da, there you go. And, um, of course, they will vary, and, of course, you may want to know of ones, um, there are particular payment gateways for countries like Canada. Um, there are particular shipment processors for Brazil. You may want to double-check on those as well. Um, under system status, um, tools, logs. It's all really, really simple. It's all, these are all for developers. I would not suggest um, clearing these out or messing with any of these unless you have a backup of your database and your website. Please do so. If you have a developer um, who is uh, worth any worth of their coding knowledge, they'll know that they need to do a backup and they know they need to check all of these. But you don't want to press buttons like these. Don't do that. Not a good idea. So getting into the real mean bones of it, you have all that set up. You're like, great, Chris, get to the, get to the goods. Okay. So adding a product, I'm going to do a very, very simple, easy product. Cool product one. Don't know about the kitchen sink, click it. That'll give you all the rest of your stuff here. 
um, product category. Let's call this uh, posters. The reason you want to do this because uh, search engines like it, uh, customers like it, and you'll like it knowing where the heck you're flipping products or categorize, especially when you have over like 10 of them and they all go into different products. So if you have, let's say, for example, shoes, you sell shoes. Do you sell just platforms or if you're just catering to the strippers, that's totally fine, whatever. Um, but if you have, let's say, uh, casual shoes, running shoes, formal shoes, whatever, suede shoes, you can have the different categories and different subcategories beneath them as well. See, as a product, uh, parent ca category, you can make subcategories. So you would have shoes and then you would have formal and then um, so on and so forth. But essentially, you want to have a category unless you go ahead and make them on their own. Now, here is the next thing. This is, this is your product description. And the, um, you'll add some more text. Of course, you want to try as much text as you possibly can because you want um, you want to be as descriptive as you can to your customers about your product. Simple product. Simple product is that just that a simple product, a simple tangible product, or even a simple uh, virtual as well as downloadable product. Now, the difference between just a simple virtual product and a downloadable product may be the fact that you might be selling a service. So massages, it's virtual, it's not tangible, it's just a service, something you can't put your hands on but you're purchasing from someone. Downloadable, uh, MP3s, eBooks, stuff like that. You need to set a price, do you need to set a SKU? No, but it, it helps you once again uh, keep track of product, especially if you have like over 100 products you would want to SKU so that you know what you sold to someone. And if you need to track it down for a refund, you do that. If you put in a price here, one thing you want to know, if let's say you put this, this price will automatically override this. If you want to schedule this, if let's say you know you're going to be putting this as the price in a month, then go ahead and use this. If you do not do that, this will override this and this will be a strike through on the front of the page. You can put add file. Once again, download limit. Let's say someone purchases this and they purchased it on their desktop and their desktop blew up and they just did it yesterday and they purchased a new computer tomorrow, um, they can re-download it from you for uh, up to three times, or you can set a, a date. So it will expire in five days from the moment they purchased it. So they have five days and three downloads to do. That's about it. Um, and this controls the scheme from in which they would download it. We can get into that later. If you have any questions, you can definitely ask that in the comments below. Simple product, group product, affiliate product, a variable product, essentially group product. Um, think of it as kind of like wholesaling. Uh, once again, if you have questions about that, you can ask. Um, if you have an affiliate product, essentially that's like drop shipping, or if let's say you are selling for Victoria's Secret or Avon, or um, and I don't want to say like big companies because I don't want them to mark this as um, content that I can't say, but essentially if you're selling for a, a larger company and you're making commission off the product, but you are allowed a web space in which you can uh, peddle their wares, um, then you would select that. You put the URL for it, put the price, um, so on and so forth. You could act like you are them, but you're just peddling for them. No problem. You can select that. A variable product. You want to use a variable product. Well, once again, that's something we can get into. If you have any further questions, that's a video um, for another time. If you're selling a t-shirt and you have um, five different colors, you would want to set your variations. Um, so say for adding variations, you need attributes, you need to add an attribute. That's a little bit more of an in-depth conversation to have, but you have your short, uh, you'll have your short description here. Once again, when they say short, they mean short. So keep it short. So we'll go ahead. And product image. We'll go ahead and upload image. And a gallery. We'll do this one, this one. Boom. And I'll show you exactly what these do in a moment. 
publish. And there are the other things to take note of in terms of, uh, I'll go over that in a moment, but if we want to go ahead and view the product. Voila. You see, based upon the image size that we spoke, that I was speaking to you about earlier, see, one, two, and three, see they get larger, you'll get different images. And of course, you would want to control that a bit. And of course, see, product description, that's a long one. This is the short one. So this is what they would normally see, let's say, if they were just looking at um, a whole host load of products in a category, they would see just this, and then another one that looks just like this, they wouldn't see all of this here. Um, but the last thing I wanted to talk about, essentially, when you're setting this up, is your permalinks for your shop. There are some plugins, there are some add-ons, there are some um, systems that will require using a very specific permalink base in order to work. Just click Save Changes, and if you were to look up the product, it would be simple to look it up this way as opposed to any other. Um, once again, that is the long short of it. There are ways if you have, um, let's say, another store already and you want to import thousands of products that you already have someplace else, or let's say you have a few hundred products, but um, you just don't feel like adding them in again, or somebody gave you, uh, let's say you're working with a vendor, and they are able to give you a spreadsheet. You have a way of importing them that is a separate add-on, and I'll go over that in a different video, in which you'll be able to import that uh, spreadsheet into the system um, in order to just basically populate all these products without having to type them um, in one at a time. Uh, but once again, I'll go over that in a separate video. Um, that is, once again, the long short of WooCommerce and product system. Uh, I'll go over different subjects at a later date. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I thank you for looking at this. Have a good one.